So in the last week program we did the preface of act of devotion. So before we go to introduction, let's have a quick recap of the speeches. Okay, let's discuss. Which book are we discuss? Which course is going on? Very good. Now let's start. So what did we discuss? We touched upon that you know, glorifying the author because without the gratitude we can't get anything. Yes. So glorifying the author. Okay. Then we did the definition of bhakti. So we talked about glorification of the author first. So what what why, why is Rupa Goswami glorified? What is special about Rupa Goswami? He is Rupa Mandiri. He is Rupa Mandiri, so what? So that way Sanatan Goswami is Ananga Mandiri. So what? He is the senior most Arishwar. Everyone agrees? Rupa Goswami is the senior most Goswami. Anyone has a different view here? Yes. Who is the senior most? Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami. Then why is Rupa Goswami? The spiritual world. In the spiritual world, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami is the senior. Which? Which one? Sanatan Goswami. Okay, where is the quoted? In the spiritual world. So how do we know that? Shastra Brahman. In Krishna Leela he is a Rupa Mandiri and in Chaitanya Leela he is a Rupa Mandiri. Correct. What is special about Rupa Goswami? Why? Why is he considered so intimate? Because he is the body of Ekmanism who is following his concepts. That is your concept. You are confusing between cause and effect. It is not because he is senior in, uh, we are following Gaudi Vaishnavism because of that he is senior most. Because he is senior most, therefore we are following, yeah, therefore we are called as Rupa Nusra. But why, what is special about Rupa Nusra? Please understand this point, from, even from exam point of view. Now I am sure everyone is here. Radharani is most confidential. Radharani is most confidential. I have quoted something very specific. Lalita Sakhi, Radharani is chief servant and she has got machines to assist her. That is fine. Yes, so that is what Amit Prabhu also said. Prabhu is a, we are Rupa Nudas and he is the... Okay, I am giving you a clue. Sri Chaitanya Manu Krishna. Correct. Okay, so please, okay, can you can you say now? Now please listen carefully. Oh yes, Prabhu, if you come late, you have to settle down very fast. Okay, otherwise whole class then looks at you. In our Mangalaya Chaitanya we pray Sri Chaitanya Manu Krishna, which means like he knows the innermost mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. So, we say Om Agyana Thimirana Shriya and after that what do we say? Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadaji So, that means Rupa Goswami knows the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu better than Mano Vishtam means what? Unka man ka baat jante hai. Rupa Goswami knows it very well. And Rupa Goswami, even before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to articulate something, Rupa Goswami will know what is very necessary. That is why he is so, he understands the mind. So that is why Rupa Goswami is considered, is so special. And then we are followers of, we are followers of Rupa Nagar. Though, if you see otherwise, in the Chaitanya Leela, Rupa Goswami was, in that sense, junior to Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami was his guru actually. Rupa Goswami is guru. And his elder brother also. But still we are called as Rupa Nagar. So, Please be aware of this term, Rupa We are all Rupa Rupa Nava means what? Followers of Rupa Goswami. And what do you mean followers of Rupa Goswami? Following means what? Following instructions. Following the instructions. Okay. So therefore, following the instructions, where are those instructions? In the books of Rupa Goswami. Which is the book of Rupa Goswami? This book, Extra of Devotion. That is why we are studying this book. Because this book is the is one of the key books to in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Huh? Nothing of Raghavala Bhakti would be known but for Rupa Goswami. His contribution. So his contribution is very special. So in the last week we, we glorified the author who is Rupa Goswami. Since you have come first time, if you don't understand anything, just feel raise your hand and ask me. So all of you are Nitesh Prabhu's wife, she is joined by us. Please welcome her. Okay, so 
so glorification of Dada. Then what did we do after glorifying Dada? What did we do after that? Did you hear? No. I'm going to catch your lines now. Now Bhagavad Gita is over. Now I'm going to catch people who are not hearing and coming. You will be caught at random. So get embarrassed at your own risk. Or other option is what? Study and do. Which is easier? Study and embarrassed. Study and do. चलता है एक मिनट का ठीक है बहुत बड़ा है पूरा करेक्ट ना तो I tell you because we don't have much time if we think we have time ना then we are fools if we actually think we have time बाद में पढ़ते हैं ना अभी क्या सेंशन बाद में करने अभी है बाद में I think anything which is procrastinated never gets done in life बाद में कुछ नहीं होता only death comes correct that is only certainty जो बाद में आएगा, नथी हेल्प से उसका। तो ये, this is the opportunity. When our hands and legs are working very nicely, when there are no diseases in the body, this is the time to study Prabhupada's books. Otherwise, what will happen? When our hands and goods, legs are good, lot of money is coming, we will spend time in upgrading our material life, and then we will repent after that. Let us not make that mistake. Despite being told by the Acharya, don't do it. बोल रहे हैं वो। फिर क्या हो कर रहा है? And we are ignoring our spiritual life. So that is only, that, that is only, it's, a, it's pathetic if a devotee does that, including myself. If I do that, please caution me. Okay. So we talked about glorification of other. Where did we go after that? So, so, sorry. Just one more point. So our entire movement is based on anything that has to be reconciled in the Shastras is can be reconciled with Rupa Goswami's instructions. He has not only written this book, he has written several other books also. Okay, then we talked about defining. What did we define? We defined Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu directly. Bhakti huh? and devotional service. So, what did we define first? Types of Bhakti. Types of Bhakti. Before that, we define anything. Before you define types of bhakti, what would you define? Define bhakti. So what is bhakti? Devotional service. Only devotion. Prabhupada defines bhakti as devotional service. So there has to be service in bhakti. Not that dil mein bhagwan hai, man mein hai and all that. Man mein toh bhoot kuch hota hai. But actually it has to, we have to do something with the tan mahal. Otherwise everything will be in the man. So it has, it's a practical service. Bhakti is very, Practically. So we saw that also. Correct? Hmm? So Rupa Goswami defines bhakti as devotional service. Hmm? So today one boy, very nice boy from Orissa, hmm? he was talking to me you know, in, uh, uh, during the Saturday feast class. So he asked a question. He has some interest in biohacking Bhagavad Gita Shlokas. So he was asking, is it good? Like that. What is, is it good or no? Yes. yes. Is it sufficient? No. no. It is necessary but not sufficient. So, so that we explained to him that yes, jnana is required, but that jnana, if it leads to bhakti, then it is good. Otherwise, it is useless. Right. Only reciting. So, hurry, what's up? Front bench is reserved for you. <laughs> so, jnana without Sorry, yeah. Jnana without bhakti is useless. We saw, we saw that last time. Then we discuss the three types of bhakti. What are the three types of bhakti? Sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti and prema bhakti. You have to bring a notebook up next time. Make notes. Otherwise, unless you are wizard, you can remember. Everyone should make notes as much as possible. So, Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. What are the types of Sadhana Bhakti? Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti and Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. What is the difference between Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti and Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti? So, it is the impetus 
or drive right or in one sense it is the reason why we do bhakti <coughs> so vaidhi sadhana bhakti is what what is the impetus for doing vaidhi sadhana bhakti like rasa root and the scriptural rules and regulations guru has told therefore i must stand the moment you teacher ne bola hai isliye padhai karta hu the moment you do that then it becomes what why the i'm giving you an example material example because teacher told i must study how much do you think that student will go not very far but what is the goal actually that this child develops an interest in studies and goes on his own correct not only that the teacher told you know child will study not like that. our parents tell therefore child is there because some day it has to culminate in we naturally doing this or spontaneously doing it so by this uh, and raga ruga sadhana bhakti means what bhakti which comes spontaneously nobody needs to you know tell us to do something so as we do bhakti it leads to something called as ras bhakti karne se ras aati hai now what is ras we define that bhakti rasamrita sindhu so bhakti we define then we define ras what is ras ras means Mellows. Mellows means? Yes. Very good. <laughs> yes, I gave an example no? from the GRE book. You remember that example? Rasa. Take care, Pastor. It should not happen like that. So what is, what is Rasa? The drive is still devotional. The pleasure that is derived by doing a certain activity. So that activity, so that you keep repeating that activity again and again. So when you do some activity, then you get a taste. You get some kind of a taste in that activity. And that taste propels you, motivates you to keep doing that activity again and again. Correct? That is called as ras. And we saw several examples of that ras. What were some examples of ras that we saw? A family man works very hard. Din ras dekha ke kam karta hai. Why? <coughs> Because he gets some happiness. He gets some thrill out of working and then seeing that money. Hey, वहाँ पर इतना पैसा आ रहा है कौन लाइक करता है? Therefore, he gets some some kind of a drive from within to keep on working like that. I ask a question. Raghavendra Sadhana Bhakti, you know, you mentioned one example of Bhagwan Baba. I don't know. I'll tell you why I'm saying I don't know. Because the moment I say what Vishnu Baba did was Raga Baba Sadhana Bhakti, then I am saying that he was a sadhak, and it will be an apraad if he is a not a sadhak. Does it make sense? Yes. That is why I cannot comment on it. But how 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 would you only exemplify that concept? How will you exemplify that concept? So, Raghunath's uh, bhajan is practiced under an acharya. Okay, we will discuss that. It's a, it's a question which you should ask me two or three times a day. When we come to Raghunath's bhajan, I will tell you that. How there were two different sects that were there. Let us say, Maa Bhutu say two different. I wouldn't call sampradaya, but two different lineages came from Lord Chaitanya. And we are in which lineage? What is our lineage called as? Uh, Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, sampradaya. Any other views? You are not concentrating. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu से दो लिनिए जाए उसमें से हमारा लिनिए क्या है? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu से आया वो तो बर्मा मध्य वर्ग का सफल है। You know that already. Two sects came out. जनार्दन दिया बोलते हैं। We are not talking. We are not talking. What is in the world is? What are? Correct. We just said that five minutes back. So. We are called as who? Madhva. So under Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Sampradaya, under Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are following Rupa Goswami's teachings. So we are Rupa Nugas. Correct? First it was Lord Brahma. Then it was Madhva Chaitanya. From there came Gaudiya. And then inside that Rupa Nugas. So that completely defines us in one sense. And inside Rupa Nugas further what? Of course, that is just a technical identification. In one sense we are in Iskand. Right. We could have been in Gaudiya Mata also, which follows Rupa Goswami. We are in this class. 
The other side is is a lineage which started with somebody by the name Gopal Guru. You must have heard this, no? We had a Gopal Guru for a few years back. So, I'm not talking about him. I'm saying that. That is where the name, name comes from. Gopal Guru. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, two people derived instructions from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One, who was Rupa Goswami, he prescribed to us Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, which will then lead to Raganuga. But then there was another sect, Gopal Guru Goswami, whose practitioners practice bhakti slightly differently than the way that you and I do. Okay? And we will discuss that later, not now. How their practices are slightly different than our practices. They both can follow Bhava and then Prema. All of them will lead to Prema, so we don't have to worry. Okay. But their sadhana practices are, the sadhana paddhati they call it, is different, slightly different. We will talk about that when we discuss. Raghavanga Bhakti specifically. She will do a seminar on Raghavanga Bhakti. At that time we talk about it. So, Rasa, everyone, everyone is clear? Rasa? What is Ras? Ras means? It's a... It is a... Uh, yeah, it gives, it's something which gives you pleasure. So which makes you do that activity. Again, it's called as Rasa. So, we talked about philanthropist who gets a Ras by working for mankind. We talked about nationalist who gets a Ras by... Desh ke liye jaan dene ke liye tayar ho. Like that. So there is some kind of a ras in that. There was another aspect of ras also we saw. Ras also has got an aspect of soccer game. You remember we discussed an example. What is soccer game? Why, why is, what is soccer at the end of the day? Yeah. Right. At the end of the day it's a ball which is filled with air. And somebody is kicking it. And then there is a net which is woven. And then the ball has to be hit inside that net. At the end of the day technically speaking it's not that. But it's around it's not hype kaha se aata. Why it comes or cricket? What is it? It's a leather, you know, which is thrown and somebody with a stick is it's actually a stick, a wood, wooden stick. Somebody is just hitting it. Now this is a simple activity. But then there is so much the bowler down, you know, his angle of delivery, then the pitch, huh? then the batsman's uh, you know elbow is coming out, he's looking like this, then he's driving, and then the fellow is diving, you know, and then he was thinking, such a tender cover drive, you know, like that. So you know. There is so much that is around this simple thing of a ball being hit. Okay? So what is it that we look for in these sports? We look for adventure. We defined that last week. You remember? We look for adventure. So this is so and but what is it actually we are looking for? When we look for adventure, what are we looking for? We are actually looking for Krishna. Because in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I am Adventure. So everyone is looking at adventure. So that you get a thrill when you see all these things. So that is an example of rasa. Now is that the ras that Rupa Goswami is talking about here? That was the next question. Right? Therefore we differentiated between mundane ras and bhakti. So mundane ras and bhakti ras. What are the difference between mundane ras and bhakti ras? This has to go into your blood, this whole thing. So anytime in the night also, if, you, if somebody asks you prepare, you should be able to tell one, two, three, four, like that. Nakra of devotion, you will study like that. Rath ko bhi uke koi pocha to, then you will be able to tell the full sequence of the connections. Okay. okay. So what is the difference between mundane rasa and? So in mundane ras, what happens in mundane ras? The businessman works for? Non-stop. Business pen chukhe jeta hai kya? Kande ko. Usually not. Because kutka danda hai. Like that. We in office, we get leave. One minute, one minute. We just want to then ask you. So, the businessman works very hard and he enjoys working very hard and then what he does at the end, he gets the money and then that propels him to work very hard. But at the end of the day, even the most staunch businessman in this world, he also needs what is called as a break. Usko bhi break chahiye. Bohat ho gaya. I mean, Panjani will go, or Mahableshwar will go. Somewhere they want to go out. Or let's go to Europe. He's a wealthy businessman, he'll go to Europe. Let's go to some vacation. And go beach side me cottage book karke, uza We will see the uh, rising sun and we'll see the nature and then we'll come back. But after seeing the rising sun and nature for 7 days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, what happens? So, 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 so then the person will come back to work hard. So 
in this material world, we are neither happy working very hard nor are we able to enjoy this material world eternally. So this is called as what? Bhogatya. Bhog means you are enjoying the fruits. Tya means you are renouncing. Bhog means you are enjoying the activity. Tya means you are renouncing the activity. So we are vacillating between Bhog and Tya. Bhog and Tya. So the nature of mundane ras, ordinary ras, is what? Bhog and Tya. So we saw that. Which is a problem. Which is a problem. Why it is Bhog and Tya? Why Bhog Tya happens? Because the pleasure in this material world, the happiness of this material world is chapal. Chapal means chapat se hai, what se nikal hai. Okay? It is fleeting in nature. It doesn't stay. It's impermanent. The happiness comes like this and then it goes like this. There is no eternal happiness in this world. Nor misery is also eternal. Misery bhi chala jata hai kuch time. With time, wo bhi chala jayega. Happiness bhi, with time it will go away. That is the nature of this material world. So therefore, in this material world, we cannot taste eternal rasa. Eternal happiness will not be there in this material world. So that is how Rupa Goswami is concluding this section. Okay. And then bhakti ras. Now we talked about bhakti. We talked about ras. So bhakti ras. And then what is the next one? Amrita. Amrita means what? Nectar. What does nectar signify? Immortality. Immortality or something which never ends. Jo kabhi khatam na ho. So bhakti ras amrit. Why is it amrit? Because this ras of bhakti will never end. Where is it mentioned in Bhagavad Gita that it will never end? Neha vikrama nasasti. Tulpa maapesa dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya. Because bhakti, jo bhi bhakti whenever you do, the credits of that are here. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It's not like the credit card of this world. Or it's not like the bank balance of this world. Whatever money we earn in this lifetime, we'll all go away. We cannot carry one naya paisa when we when we go to our next birth. And even if we are able to carry, that birth may not be human. So what is the point? What will a dog do with dollars? Correct? No? Dog wants meat to eat. Correct? So dollars are carried. So therefore, whatever money etc. we earn, it's all going to end at the, the whole meaning of that uh, entity called money is going to end in this lifetime. So obviously money is not absolute truth there. Right? So, but this nectar, amrit of bhakti is not like this. Whatever bhakti we do, the credits of that remain eternally and it is carried forward. And you begin from where you left off. In this lifetime, I may be a PhD in English literature, but in the next lifetime I have to start with ABCD. Right? But whereas bhakti is such that wherever you leave, you are going to start from there. We also took example of Sham Sundar, Pityan who started playing Mridanga right away. Nobody taught him. Straight away he was playing. Because there is something that is there from the previous lifetime, some connection. And sometimes many times you see that connection of devotees. From childhood itself, the devotees are very sattvic and all that. Okay. So this is this is Amrit. And, and we talked about Shukriti also. Bhakti Unmukhi Shukriti means what? Bhakti which is done in the previous lifetime will carry forward in the next lifetime. So we talked about that. So that is Bhakti, Ras and Amrit. And then finally we concluded that Bhakti is a, this Amrit is what? It's like a ocean. Yeah, it's a chota Charnamrit. Atna mandir mein aina kitna milega. How much Charnamrit is there? So much. But this is a different ocean. It is an ocean of bliss. This bhakti ras is never ending and its quantity is also akin to an ocean. The bliss is akin to an ocean. Like that. Now the book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu talking about oceans is divided into four. How many? What are the oceans? Anyone remember? Northern Ocean, Eastern Ocean, Western Ocean and Southern Ocean. And as a part of this course, Bhakti Shastri course, in Nectar of Devotion, which ocean are we going to concentrate on? Eastern Ocean. Eastern ocean. Why are we going to concentrate only on Eastern Ocean? Because the other three oceans are the subject matter of higher courses, not this course. Eastern Ocean, predominantly we will be discussing which Bhakti? Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Predominantly in that sense we will cover entirety of Sadhana Bhakti. 
will cover sadhana bhakti but we will also we'll touch more on vaidhi sadhana bhakti and we'll have two chapters on one chapter also on bhava bhakti and one or two chapters on prema bhakti so we are got that is the scope of this particular so this is the kind of recap i would have expected you all to do okay so i'm setting the standards now in the class so in the next class this is the kind of recap i would like you all to so i know that you are studying and not we are not meeting only you know jumma to jumma right <laughs> वापस आके मिले हम लोग अरे बोल रो नाइस लास्ट से कुछ तो बोला था आपने सो व्हाट इज नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन टीचर्स व्हाट हाउ वी कंक्लूडेड बाय सेइंग दैट नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन टीचर्स आर वेरी सिंपल थिंग व्हाट इज द टीचर्स टीचर्स इज हाउ टू लव हाउ टू लव ऑल वी सॉ दैट इट्स वेरी सिंपल Huh? Tennis starts like a tennis. Yeah. Tennis starts with service and love. The same principle is here also. We saw that. We had that example. All right. So today, see, eight recap. Me eight ten. Oh yeah. But next class we will not do this kind of recap. So the onus is on you. The responsibility of learning is on all of you. You cannot expect me to teach also, and I will only recap. You have to just come. and then ask for you know the important questions there the exam ke pehle what is called as maha somebody asked me prabhu maha recap karo ke na so which means that the entire responsibility for is on me only i don't mind i don't mind you know why you know why because actually i am improving the loss is not mine the loss is yours it is not my loss if i do maha recap but you are losing out In fact, this time I would I will catch anyone from here and ask to do Maharika. Two three people will be there, of course, because I'm sure one person. Ah, huh? uh, we'll catch some of the weakest links in this class. We'll ask. We we'll start with them to do Maharika. So if you think you are the weak link, then please study and come. Because you'll be you'll be one of the first ones. In college, we used to have the Raiwa. Then they used to call the weakest link first, and then we go further. Okay, so we completed the preface. Everyone is clear now. Nobody will forget now. Till next week. <laughs> so today we will do introduction. It's not simply an introduction. What we are going to do is an analysis of the analysis of the introduction to nectar of. Devotion. How many people have read the introduction and come? One, two, three, four. How many will read and come from the next class? Okay. Can you lift it? Mother, what is this? <laughs> this means yes, and this means no. You can sit like this also. नहीं पढ़ोगा क्या कर लेगा? You can do that. You have an option to do that. Okay. How many of you take an vow that you will read and come on Radha Rani in Kartik month that you will read every class and come? Every class. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let. Uh, what is that? The men is are uh, differentiated from the what? There is one English saying, no? Ah, men from the boys. What differentiate the men from the boys? How many of you take a vow that you will read and come? <laughs> At least in Kartik month. So some of you don't want to take this vow for Radha Rani's pleasure, is it? That you will read one chapter and come. Huh? Huh? Okay. Please read and come. <laughs> All right. So. Come, you will understand more. We don't have to spend time reading here because, see, please understand. Nectar of devotion is not like Bhagavad Gita that we can take four purports. Usme se do purport yahan padenge. Then we will discuss. It's not like that. If you start reading nectar of devotion here, then finish because it will go page after page. Correct. So I am going to give you. I have read and come. 
So I am going to directly share hmm, what are the important points from that section. But if you read and come, then you will benefit more from what I am saying. And then you will be able to do a much more powerful recap yourself. Hmm? And then also it will help you in preaching. Especially if you are in preaching, it is very important. You study and come and then you recap. Take this opportunity to recap all this. When you recap, you will remember everything. Even if you are struggling, it's okay. And if you go wrong, it's fine. But the very fact that you are taxing your brains, so thoda exercise like also. Yogesh Gopal Prabhu was telling me, if I don't exercise, then Nirav Prabhu, they always tell me, if you don't exercise, then Sarir kya ho jayega? Dheela pad jayega. Dimaag ke liye bhi ho hi hai. That is all I am trying to add. It is not only for the physical hands and legs, for the brain also. The brain also will rust, junk put it down. Office is where? We have to try to tax our memory and then recap. We have to try that. Otherwise, it will become dull. Listening is a very bad way of education. In in that sense, only listening. Only listening. It should be that. Experiential. At least you know it should be what what is the problem? Didactic. No, didactic is one thing. क्या बोलते हैं? Interactive, interactive, interactive. Okay, so analysis of lecture of devotion comes directly after the preface. So the first aspect in analysis which you need to know is the मंगला चर। What is मंगला चर? You remember in भक्ति का भगवत गीता also we had studied this. Uh, Mangala Charan is what? Invoking auspiciousness. Okay. So the first six verses of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. When I say Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, I am talking about Rupa Goswami's book, original book. The first six verses <coughs> talk about the Mangala Charan. Mangala Charan means auspicious invocation. Sorry, you had a question too. Yes, so we are talking about rasa. So I got in doubt. Is that is that the evil people get the rasa? Is that we call it rasa because of that they do it again and again? Yes. Like few days last week, somebody in Melbourne, you know, he killed some two elderly people. Police asked him why you killed. He said just like that, just for fun. He derived some rasa out of that. <laughs> But that is not the rasa which is being spoken about here. That is evil rasa. Actually, there is a there is a equivalent rasa of that which is pure in its nature in the spiritual world. But that will not be part of our course. But we will do it as a side. We'll touch upon that. Vibhat saras, ghastliness is one of the rasa, even in the spiritual world. Yeah. And the perverted reflection of that is this material world, where see we where we see these killings like that. Yeah. <coughs> He was uh, he was saying long ago they were about Jesus and Buddha and Prophet Prophet and Prophet. Is that the same thing for the Buddha? He said about the same. How they they complete the circuit? Is that the same thing you mean for the Buddha? But specifically that particular section, which is which we are going to study next class. Krishna willing, if we finish this section today. The recap itself took half the class, so we may have to do half class next week also, or whatever I wanted to complete today. But yes, next week we will start the Bijam Kotam section we, because we are going to talk about next class. We will be talking about the six characteristics of bhakti. In that, the first one is anyone remembers? Klesha Agni. Who said that? So Klesha Agni. So as a part of that, we will do. Just hold hold your question till then. All right. So, what are we discussing now? Mangalachar. So, any time when we read a book, tomorrow you may my graduate from this course to Bhakti Vaiba, Krishna Willing. Okay. In Bhakti Vaiba, also, what will you start with? Mangalachar. There, it starts with Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janma Dasya Yatha. No, that was one point, one point, one. So, there is an elaborate. That is again Mangalacharan is starting. Every scripture starts with Mangalachar. Mangalacharan means what? Invoking. Okay, you need to make notes if you have uh, pen, pen and paper. These are all. Don't think because oh no, like in school we used to think. No, oh preface introduction. Oh, to kya? Professor puche kya? No exam mein. We used to think like that, no? Always. And professor never asked, correct? But here the professor will ask. 
बिकॉज दिस प्रेफेस इज नॉट लाइक द ऑर्डिनरी मंडे नो हिस्ट्री बुक के पहले आते ना I would like my express my thanks to my wife, you know, Shrimati Kishori Lal Sharma. No, it is not one of those kind of prefaces. Correct? Children, Munnu and Tunnu. No, yeah, I said that not here. Preface. This is serious stuff. Okay. So questions can come from preface as well as from can come. No questions will come. In fact, one of the major questions is going to come from the introduction itself. Right now, I am telling you. सो मंगलाचरण मंगलाचरण ये क्या माइक के बगैर आवाज इज देर माइक ट्रांसमिशन सो मंगलाचरण हैज गॉट थ्री एस्पेक्ट एनी वन रिमेम्बर्स वॉट आर द थ्री एस्पेक्ट ऑफ मंगलाचरण नमस्कार एंड आशीर्वाद देर आर थ्री एस्पेक्ट ऑफ मंगलाचर कोई भी बुक पढ़ो ये तीन एस्पेक्ट होगा कोई भी स्क्रिप्चरल बुक पढ़ेंगे तो यू विल फाइंड दैट दीज थ्री एस्पेक्ट यू ऑलवेज बिगिन बाई इनवर्किंग ऑस्पिशियसनेस सो वॉट इज वस्तु निर्देश वॉट यू मीन बाय दैट डिफाइनिंग द ऑब्जेक्टिव माता जी आफ्टर कार्तिक मत इज ओवर ऑल्सो प्लीज कंटिन्यू एंसरिंग लाइक दिस ओके वेरी नाइस इट शुड कंटिन्यू इट शुड नॉट बी विद इज फ्लैश इन द पैन प्लीज रीड लाइक दिस एंड कम थ्रू आउट द कोर्स ओके सो वास्तु निर्देश मीन्स वॉट डिफाइनिंग द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द बुक एक बुक पढ़ने का कोई ऑब्जेक्टिव तो है फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर रीडिंग वॉट इज दट कॉल्ड एस महात्मा गांधी इज वॉट इज दट Which book is that? My experiments with truth, for example. What are who are you trying to understand? Mahatma Gandhi's mood, right? So, like this, vastu nirdesh. Ye pura book padne ka lakshya kahan hai? Who is the object? Any idea? Krishna Prem. Very good. Uh, Krishna Prem is oh, who is it? Krishna Prem is a person or what? Huh? Yeah, Krishna. Lord Krishna is the object. Hmm? So that he is called as the he is. and attaining love for him is the goal of studying this book but the direct personality who we are trying to understand is or devil develop love towards is krishna so vastu nirdesh okay so vastu nirdesh has got because it's a technical section that's why i'm saying if you don't concentrate then vastu nirdesh is the object of this book now why is who is the object of this book why is lord krishna the object of this book or how is he defined how is he defined how is lord krishna defined so correct akila rasa amrita murti so lord krishna is defined as akila rasa amrita murti what is akila rasa amrita murti He is the reservoir of all rasas. He is the yeah reservoir of all rasas. So Bhakti Rasamrit Maharaj tells in his lecture. How I many of you heard that and came? Okay. So he tells in his lecture that in this world you can call someone as a great batsman. Sachin Tendulkar can be called as a great batsman. Glenn McGrath can be called as a great bowler. But is there someone who can be called as a personification of ultimate personification of cricket? That's a very big kitab, if you like. Kitab means what? Uh, glorification that someone can have or a title that someone can have. So, Lord Krishna is gets that title when it comes to rasa. He is the he is the principle of all rasas. He is the reservoir of all rasas. Hmm? which means nothing no ras exists outside of him in this material world no emotions can be possible to us in this material world if it is not coming from him he is a perfect universal set if you like of everything all of us experience subsets of rasa but he is the 
అఖిల రసామృత మూర్తి ద వర్డ్ మూర్తి ఇస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ వై బికాస్ హీ హస్ గాట్ అ ఫామ్ లార్డ్ కృష్ణ ఈజ్ అ పర్సన్ ఎస్ఎల్ఈ ఇట్స్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ అఖిల రసామృత మూర్తి ఈజ్ అ పర్సనాలిటీ సో హీ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ ద ఆల్ లవబుల్ పర్సనాలిటీ in his uh, in uh, as akila rasamrita murthy he is the all lovable personality hmm? not simply someone who has majesty and has authority okay? let me let us explain this let us understand this carefully what did we say all lovable persona or personality lord krishna is what all lovable person or personality <coughs> not simply a person who has majesty power authority when he call himself as akila rasamrita murthy we are not talking about this when we talk about this who are we talking about we are talking about when we talk about this who are we talking about Many times people ask, what is the difference between Vishnu and Krishna? Correct here. So it is God in office and God in home. At home. home. Where may? Office may? So what is the topic of Nectar of Devotion book? Understanding? That is right. That's why that is where Rasa comes. Yaha pe koi Rasa nahi. Yaha pe sirup. Ah, Bhagavan nai Rasa. Rasa ya Rasa. Dasya is also a ras, but Dasya ras is with love, not simply, not Vaikuntha. The Dasya ras in Vaikuntha is different than the Dasya ras in Goda. Both are Dasya ras. How is it different? Okay, let me give you an example. Hindi movies again. A.K. Hangal, anyone knows? How many of you know A.K. Hangal? He was Rajesh Kanna, you know? Uh, when the hero is there, he will always be the servant in the house. <laughs> Poor Babu, he will come like that. My, no, this fellow will be a very rich man, powerful fellow. But this fellow, but he will always have a special kaka, kaka. Like that he will talk. You know what, I, you understand what I am talking about? I don't know whether you get it because thus I can only explain it. <laughs> so though there is dasya, there is some vatsali also mixed with that. For example, if the hero is you know uh, wants to marry some college mate some heroine is no? she is also introduced in the movie okay but the hero father is that uh, om puri or somebody you know amrish puri okay so therefore he is very scared of that fellow no oh bhai pita ji ko nahi pata chalna chahiye kaka aap hi kuch bataiye na kya karu ha beta main sambhalunga tu ja you know he says like that so that means what there is a dasya who is he actually he is only a servant but it is mixed servitude is mixed with what paternal affection does it make sense yes. so that is that that is so in now you understand extra colored a little bit and something like that i would say okay so in goloka there is dasya but still there is something different kind of dasya there is some affection also is there it is not pure dasya it's not like pure dasya is where do we find pure dasya is hanuman in office hanuman <laughs> సర్వెంట్ ద సిఇఓ కమ్స్ బై దట్ 
So even between the CEO and the next in command, let us say CEO and executive vice president, or let us yeah, let us say CEO. What what relationship is there? One of servant and master, right? कितना भी हो इसको, this fellow will not इसका बेटा का ना कुछ love affair रहेगा किसी के साथ he will not interfere. एक के अंगल क्या है? This fellow cannot do. Correct? इसका घर में जो servant है and इसका son कुवर बाबू they both can have their relationship. But this fellow, my executive vice president cannot say, in my opinion, the chairman ji, you know, I think your son, you should go ahead. He say, the next board meeting you are out. <laughs> Correct? So there is no relationship. It's purely your majesty and I am working under you. Huh? I need you to give me a job, but you are giving me a job. I, I am very glad. I am very glad that you have given me an executive vice president. I will consult you on every decision. I am always याद रखो कुछ भी हो मैं आपके नीचे ही हूँ. You know this is the mood of Dasyaras. Whereas here Dasyaras sometimes you know Krishna gets controlled by this kind of mood. Yes. We will talk about that again later on. Prabhu. So 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 this book is not about uh, the Dasyaras of Vaikuntha. Where only you are a God and I am servant. Hmm? So Prabhupada, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada opens the Srimad Bhagavatam with this line, which I have told several times in the class. What is the line, famous line of Prabhupada? The conception of God. Correct. Absolute. Prabhupada says the conception of, of God and the conception of absolute truth are not on the same Please, please remember this always. Srila Prabhupada opens the preface or introduction of this place from Srimad Bhagavatam with this line. Okay? Why are you talking about Prabhupada? That means God means what? God means? Oh, yeah, Parvati Gara, you know, we say, you are the protector, I am just, I don't know anything about you. That is the relationship between God and us. Right? So that is called as God. But Krishna is not only that, that he is in his Vishnu feature. But here, Yashoda Mother is running with the we are doing Dhamma Rashtra Gavna, stick like a bhagari and then what is that? His eyes were fearful and his breathing quick, his pearl necklace shook, he was trembling. Now why did Bhagavan 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 say, kya hai asli? Ho janta ne mein kohan ho. He does he talk like that? Does Bhagavan talk like that? Is ko maar raha ho? Apna hi ilaka hai so. So he will not talk like that, no? He is actually, he is, his pearl necklace is, you know, and he is running, his eyes are, you know, fully, he is scared. So that is absolute truth. That means he also wants to be somebody's child. Bhagwan ko bhi chahiye. Mai bhi kisi ka beta rahu. So that rust is relished by the Lord also. So therefore, the conception of God and the conception of absolute truth are not on the same level. Prabhupada writes like that. So, in Vrindavan, Dasyaras is always mixed with some other Rasas. There is no pure Dasyaras. Is that what they infer? Yeah. And in Brahma Samhita, you will understand this. If you read Brahma Samhita, we are able to get through, you know, Vakti Siddhartha Saraswati Swami is English. Then, Thoda Bodh Uthme Se Samanji Me Pade Aaya Ga. Okay, there are spheres in all the directions. In Golok Vrindavan, there are spheres. Okay? You can't enter Golo Vrindavan if you have an iota of pure uh, conception of Bhagavan Shiro to that point. You cannot enter Golo Vrindavan. Entry name will Another question. So, there will be some conception of his Godhood, but it has to be very. The, the aspect of Krishna as the absolute truth has to be much more overpowering than the conception of Krishna as God. Then only you get entrance and that is Goloka Bhakti. That is how Goloka Bhakti is different from Vaikuntha Bhakti. That is the special uh, aspect of Gaudiya Sampradaya. Which is not available in other Sampradayas. Okay. Everywhere it is like this. Like this. Okay. Is that When you go into the higher and higher, there is no. There is no. Yashoda Mahathir are doing like this and you know, they are all puja and they are doing the Lord. He says, oh, I have enough of that. Here, chasing with the stick or wrestling with the Lord. 
completely different mood. Yeah. So in Vaikuntha there is pure dasya. In Vaikuntha there is pure dasya. In all the ways. In all the ways. So now uh, to give you an example of Vishnu Siddha who uh, uh, is, uh, you know, when the procession came out, he was blessing the Lord. But he was worshipping Vishnu, right? So he was ex exhibiting Vatsala as well. But his destination was Vishnu, right? I don't know. I don't can, know. can we say there is no love at all in Vaikuntha? I don't know. Because I have, no, I have only studied one pastime of Vishnu. Based on one pastime of somebody, you cannot control who the personality is. So we have, we have mentioned many pastimes. Uh, For example, Andar, Vishnu Chitta's daughter is yeah. Andar. Yeah. Andar wanted to accept uh, Narayana as Vishnu. Yeah. Is that different? Yeah. Not just your master and servant. So, so can we really say that there is no love existing in Vaikuntha, in Dasyaras? There is only pure Dasya. Vaikuntha is yes, it's pure Dasya. Pure Dasya. That is what I have heard. But in this case of Vaikuntha, you see, the mood is to serve the Narayana. Okay. So it is again more, see, under, see, the, see, the mood is like this, as Jagan Prabhu pointed out rightly. It will not happen. We have not heard that the personalities in Vaikuntha are calling the Lord as a black man who doesn't have any values in there. You will not hear this in Vaikuntha. Like Krishna is scared, you know, trembling. Radharani Narasto Niyam. It is not like that. Or they are saying that, you know, like, you know, in the uh, Gau Puja time, we saw that past time. He said, you have to pay tax. We are all making Krishna pay tax. Like that. So you will not see these kind of past times. In Vaikuntha Bhakti, it is not there. Where the Lord becomes subservient. The Lord doesn't become subservient. Like he is still Lord. Nakanadar is just sleeping like that. And Andal is also going towards. Yes, Muda husband is there. But Satya Bhama, yeah. what happens? She goes into Kok Bhavan. I don't know what to talk to you. And then Lord Krishna is going and saying, Hey, why is he not talking? Even as an experience, I go. यहाँ पे गोप बाबू नहीं है तो ऐसा नहीं है एक रोज के लिए कर जो भी होगा है ना ऑल में हो If 
you want me to fight with you, I will give you a tough fight. Because you want it. Does it make sense? Because you want it. It's your pleasure. It doesn't matter. Mujhe paap lagega. Like for example, the gopi is taking the Krishna has a headache. The children always do that past time. Krishna has a headache. So gopis don't even care. Kya farak padta? Take paap laga to laga. What is more important is Krishna headache would go away. Mera dhuse se dust leke diya. Thik hai. Vaipun da vakti me this is not there. Oh, Papa Jara, you know, people will say, you know, like that, you know, you see, you know, you see, Papa Lagya, you know, this is all relevance. Which one is right? Which one is right? There is no right and wrong in the spiritual world. Right and wrong is the language of what we are discussing is spirituality between right and wrong. Right and wrong come come from there is no duality in the spiritual world. That is why it is called as Advaita. There is no duality. Spiritual world is a duality. Duality is only one duality concept is there. That he is he can be Bhagwan. We are all is that duality is there. But in that sense, there is no uh, the right word is actually dichotomy is the right word. दो तरफ, दो, the nature of something to be दो तरफ, is called as dichotomy. The dichotomy of truth and falsehood, like that. So this dichotomy only exists in the material world. It doesn't exist in the spiritual world. So just to answer the obvious question, when is it? In the spiritual world, fear is also pleasurable. यहाँ का ऐसा नहीं है, भाई आ गया, it's not like that. Their spiritual world is also, the fear is also blissful. Everything is blissful there. There is no two ways about it. And, it's not, and we talk more about right and wrong. Yeah. Just to answer, would it be then your mood and your. Uh, and, you know, this is right or wrong based on your choice in your mood? Is that what it is? Or will you end up going to open one or two by one? Either you end up going. I mean, so you are following Bhakti. Depends. Golak Bhakti is one step higher than Bhakti. No, 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 no. How is it on the same? Don't go outside and make a statement. Golak Bhakti is higher. See, the moment, this word is very dangerous. Prabhuji, I am higher than you. Moment and tell him like that, he will let next class a guy up. What do you think? The word high is a very dangerous word in this material world. High denotes what? That you are lower. I am higher, uh, I am superior, you are inferior. High, cup, high, high has got a very uh, negative. Yeah, people don't understand the word high. So the answer is right. Golok Bhakti is higher than Vaikuntha Bhakti. But it is not higher in the hierarchical sense. You don't put hierarchy in What difference? This is the word. That's all. The Ras is there in Golok so don't go to the platform of Prima Bhakti, but you are still following Gaudi Vaishnavism. Vaishnavism is something I have, but help me God, you will take back again, but in this material world, till you reach the Prima platform, all you will enter the Vaishnavism class, because you have already reached the Prima platform. So Vaishnavism is not like, you know, uh, your grade C in college. I was very proud of it. I wanted to get grade A, but unfortunately they gave me grade C only. The toppers of the class got grade A. So I did not do my bhakti well, therefore I got Vaikuntha allocation. Which company you got? People say, which college you got? No, I only got regional engineering college. You got IIT. No, it is not like that. It is not like that. I said, I don't know how to do it. 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 Vaikuntha is a spiritual word.
Sampradaya, no, Acharyas. They are all, they are all, they are devotees of the world. It is just the Ras. In which Ras do they want to share? So they still want to always know His Godhood and that is what their Rasa is with the Lord. Then the Lord gives them that. Okay. Ye yatha maa parpadyante tam stataiva vajamyam. Jaisa aap mujhe approach karo ke, vaisa mai aapko, I will facilitate that mood of yours. At the end of the day, the Lord is Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. He, 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 is, uh, he uh, encompasses every mood of His devotion. There is no restriction. Every mood is accepted. Oh, pura exhaust. Universal set of us. You can imagine. So many permutations and combinations. Infinite permutations and combinations. Okay. Yes. Sorry, it's a, it's a very important topic. Everybody is asking. No problem. <laughs> Everyone is okay with this question, sir. Don't blame me after that. So, I think this is uh, back on the language test. That means uh, whatever mood one has, and again, the original constitutional position was the basic piece in that mood, right? That is the final destination. But because that is in that mood, that is its position. Right? See, we have to understand one thing that the Lord knows our heart. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question?
बट जब वो घर में आता है तो वॉट आप Who was 
Goswami is grouping five different gopis into three categories. Okay. The first category is Tarika and Palika. Not Tarika. <laughs> By chance you are thinking that. <laughs> Mind will go here and there. Tarika and Palika. The second is Shama and Dalita. Third is So he is grouping into three categories based on their proximity to the Lord. Yeah, you have a question? Right. So each group has got five gopis, right? No, I never said like that. I said five gopis are classified into three groups. Five gopis are classified into three groups. You, you have any objection? <laughs> two is to two is to one, can you do Gopis, 
Shama and Lalita, the Lord is not controlling them, but He is taking them into His intimate circle. If I intimate circle, I get, so it's not only about control. Then there are certain privileges they may have. Correct? Whereas, with Sripati Radharani, what happens? He becomes Lord Krishna himself becomes This is the beauty. With this gopi, Lord Krishna becomes submissive lover. That is being brought up very beautifully in the Vastu Nirdesh What's your question? I was thinking why cannot why can't we use the word controlled? Where? So control. Krishna becomes controlled. So five gopis are being classified into three. First two, Tarika and Palika become subjugated. Second two come in is inner circle. With one gopi he becomes completely controlled as a figure. Udar kuch nahi chalta hai. Correct? And it is very auspicious. Who is one? It is Krishna. Shrimati Radha is one. So the second group is he can be controlled and controlled, right? Yeah. But here it is purely. Because sometimes Lord Krishna gets controlled by Lalita. Sometimes Lalita gets controlled by But with here, he is always submissive. Put away from that. Prasadi Mahi. And then maybe go to the school or just father? Father. But in the other two. It's the highest. But in the other two categories there are many books. There are many. There are many. There are many here. There are so many books. Prabhu, you gave example of you know the judge, uh, uh, you know, the, the majesty in the court. So there is Lord Narayana. And Krishna, the fullness of you know, sweetness blossoms, right? So, Narayana, Lakshmi, Krishna, Radharani, is it we can say that? So, when we do Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, as long as we continue doing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, are we worshipping Radha and Krishna? In the temple, when we go and we worship Radha and Krishna, who are we worshipping actually? We are actually worshipping Krishna. Okay? But does it mean our destination is Vaikuntha? No. Unless and otherwise, your prayojan or vastu nirdesh is Lakshmi Narayana. You are doing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, but your mood is what? Towards Krishna and Radharani, who cannot be actually worshipped with Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. We will talk about that later. Actually, Krishna and Radharani, Radha Vallabha, Radha Shamsundar cannot be worshipped with Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti because there is no room for Vaidhi Bhakti in Gola Gunda. We already said that. So, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti say all of us have to migrate in next lifetime. How many of you want to migrate in this lifetime? First of all, we should have desire. Then we should desire to be backed up with birth. Okay, the desire is there. So, the Lord Krishna knows our desires. He knows inside our heart, he knows how we want, what is our mood in approaching. So then he will facilitate that mood for us. If we want Vaikuntha Bhakti inside our heart, he will facilitate that further. But inside our heart, if the two-handed bending form of Sham Sundar is attracting to us, yes, he may accept our Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti worship in the form of in his aspect of Lakshmi Narayan. But still, he knows that. It, our education will not stop at these guys have for the Or we are in the inner circle man. Just like if you require some qualification to enter the king's palace, to enter the king's palace, if you need some shifarish, shifarish means influence or some qualifications, yes, through that you can enter the king's palace. But now you are entering the king's personal chamber. How much more do you need for that? You are entering the king's personal chamber. Then you need even more. 
like even the CEO's office, when you go, you can still enter the CEO's office and be in the waiting lounge, where CEO will come outside and then, but what do you be in the CEO's personal room? That is different. So therefore, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti will definitely give us qualifications, will make us at least pure from lust, <coughs> anger, envy, greed and pride. It will bring us out of the but after that and nishta till these stages yes but after that when we are talking about taste ruchi asakti means attachment bhava and prema then the realm of raga raga sadhana where you know now your mood is like most spontaneous towards your nishta dev that will start so we saw Vastu Nirdesh. The second aspect is called as what is the second aspect? So we saw first aspect. He is Akira Rasamrita Murthy and he is the attractor of the gopis. These two aspects we saw today. Namaskar. Namaskar means what? Offering. So, uh, Vastu Nirdesh is what? Vastu Nirdesh is the goal of the book. Namaskar means what? Offering obeisances. So, in this book, a lot of obeisances are being exchanged. Who does Rupa Goswami pay obeisances to? First, to Lord Chaitanya, who personally taught him Bhakti Ras. Correct? And inspired him to write Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So first he is paying obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then he is offering obeisances to Sanatana Goswami who is not only his elder brother but also his Guru, his spiritual master. And he prays that may my book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu may it be pleasing to my <coughs> spiritual master. He is praying like that. Then he is making a very interesting prayer, a very interesting analogy is being given. He says that great devotees and acharyas, great devotees and acharyas, spiritual masters, they are like sharks in the ocean of nectar. It's a very beautiful point. They are like sharks in the ocean of nectar. Who are like sharks? Great devotees and acharyas. This is a very beautiful, important analogy to remember. Even from your exam point of view. Why is it compared to sharks? Why is it compared to sharks? Because the sharks are found only in the deep ocean. They are not found in the rivers which lead to the Sharks are not found in rivers which lead to the ocean. What is the analogy from here? The rivers are compared to Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Jnana Yoga, whatever yoga you are talking about, Kundalini Yoga, whatever yoga you are talking about. All these rivers lead into the ocean of So the shark-like personalities, devotees, do not swim, do not have anything to do with these yogas. They only like to do. No other process attracts them. Does it make sense? No other path of liberation attracts them. They are very, very focused on bhakti yoga. Okay? So they live only in this ocean. They are never ever attracted to the lesser pleasures of the other yogas. Not even attracted to Asta Siddhis, nothing. Slowly it's leading up to the definition of pure bhakti in the next chapter. So they reject these rivers. The devotees reject these rivers. Who likes these rivers of Jnana Yoga? The impersonalists. They like such, such rivers. Right? So the devotees reject 
थोड़ा सरिशा पर से जाके तो ठीक है डोंट माइंड वेरी क्विकली द लॉर्ड कैन बी अंडरस्टूड इन थ्री एस्पेक्ट्स ब्रह्मन परमात्मा एंड भगवान ब्रह्मन इज द इंपर्सनल फीचर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड भगवान सगुण साकार या निर्गुण निराकार मे बी कल से ना ब्रह्मन इज द निर्गुण निराकार फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड भगवान इज द सगुण साकार फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्ल्ड डू मेक सेंस ओके सो The so so jnana yoga leads to that impersonal nirgun realization. Devotees are not interested. Okay. So it is mentioned in this book that the impersonalists they are unable to distinguish between the path and the practitioner. Does it make sense? They are unable to distinguish the between the path and the. <coughs> the path and practitioner. They are unable to distinguish. Are you able to understand this? We'll do all this. We'll discuss it in the next class because it's. I told you it's a very technical subject. For the impersonalists, path and the impersonalists are unable to distinguish between the path and the practitioner. You hope you want to explain quickly? Okay. 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 The person in the river is the fish. The path is the river. Did I not tell you? The river which leads into the ocean. So the path is the river. The person inside that is the. Sorry, I am trying to draw a fish. Okay. The person inside that river is a fish. Is the fish the river? No. So the Maya bodies are unable to distinguish between the path and the practitioner. Okay. Shila Prabhupada ki.